First, from the post millennial, Bumble cuts staff as Gen Z turns away from dating apps. The other story we have, which I'll get into in a little bit, is that Gen Z, and once again, new polls are coming out showing Gen Z is going for Trump. And they're, they're, they're very similar stories. I mean, what we see with Gen Z turning away from dating apps and shifting towards Donald Trump is a conservatizing or I don't, I don't even think it's a conservatizing, but the next generation is more conservative. And I think it has a lot to do with liberals don't have kids. They don't have kids. They abort their kids. They sterilize their kids. Conservatives have more kids. So the future is going to skew conservative. So long as conservatives keep having kids. Here's the story. They say on Tuesday, Bumble released its annual earnings report, revealing the numbers were lower than expected. To tackle the decrease in demand, largely among younger demographics, the dating app announced that it would be laying off a third of its workforce and using the money it saved on salaries to reinvest in areas of business that would drive long term growth. So this is huge. This is 350 jobs at Bumble. I think dating apps are garbage, and I think Gen Z is based AF. I'm not trying to be negative here, but do we think that this could also be perhaps because people are consuming things like OnlyFans more and more, and they're just, you know, doing that sort of stuff, and they're not actually going out in the real world? They're just kind of experiencing dating through pornography and things of that nature? Pro yeah. Probably, but I do think Gen Z is more based. So, yeah, also I, like, yeah, you've... I, I, what we're seeing with the uh, younger generation is that the males are going very right, right and the women are going left. Mm -hmm. So I think they're turning these dating apps into cash grabs too. Like um, Tinder, I used eight years ago or 10 years ago, I started using it and it was five bucks a month and now it's 40, mm -hmm. 40. Wow. Uh, it's even more than that. I think it's if you get the upgraded. They have all like, kinds geez. of bells and whistles you can pay well, for. Well, there's a, there's a better app you can get. It's called like Millionaire Matchmaker or something. I don't know what it's actually called. But there are apps where it's like you have to prove you have a certain net worth to be on it. Yeah, I saw yeah. an article about one where you had to have a certain credit score to be <laughs> accepted. <laughs> There's farmers only, you know. You it's gotta true. be a farmer. -date, Christian I Mingle. Christian I wonder Mingle. if those are better because you have some some stuff in common. Like Tinder is just you're literally in the area I'm in. I guess there's some ability to screen for like some things. I don't know. I've never used them. But the thing is- They're the, all garbage. The the What gets me here is they're saying- we're going to invest in other things to ensure long-term growth. But for a dating app, like, is is it Tinder? One of them has a slogan, like, we're the app we want you to delete us or something like that. That's a terrible Oh, yeah, slogan. I know what you're talking about. It's not Tinder. But, okay, Hinge, maybe. The thing is, for Bumble to have long-term growth, that means they need there always to be a stable single, single population that's actively using it all yep. the time. So what are they investing in? Like Anti-marriage lobbying. Uh, yeah, Ashley oh. Madison. <laughs> like, like, what are we Abortion. Doing? Maybe, like, birth yeah. control ads. Like, whatever they're investing in, and it's not to downgrade their business model. And I know there are couples that meet on apps and are very happy together, but I don't know that their long-term growth is what I want. I also think generally, just personally, I think meeting someone in person and having a community that knows them is a much better way to vet someone you, through a dating app. Do you think people are ashamed? Like if they're dating someone, they met off an app? Because if uh, like, how did I, you guys meet? And they go on an app. I think this has changed a lot internet. because when it was just eHarmony or just like where you would have a profile on a website, I think people did say like, oh, we met at a cooking mm -hmm. class. But now it's so much more, it's very, very common to meet people on an yeah, app. So I went to a wedding recently where the priest literally during his homily was like, we're so glad that Jack swiped right. And everyone was kind of just like, wow, he really went there. Like, so yeah, I feel I like, it, yeah, it's starting to become a little bit more normal. You know what we should do? We should just, now that, you know, the CIA has everyone's information and the NSA, they should just write an algorithm that matches you up with whoever you're supposed to be with. That's it. There's a Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Yeah. But that was that, that episode was interesting because it was actually a program they wanted to be in that created an algorithm that generated all the possible scenarios and then found the people that were meant to be together. Yeah. So it was like you went to a company to get it done. It wasn't like you were forced to do it. Yeah. You're op you're trying to to be selectively paired with someone. Yeah. Like in the in the episode, they're forced to be together and they and if they they're like, no, I want to be the other person. I was like, too bad, you can't be, because this is what the computer said. The That was actually just part of a simulation where two people went, said, you know, help us find our mate. And then it did, you know, a million iterations of a simulation to find out who would work better together. I have to think that there's some effect like that on dating apps. Like if you're, on, if you're choosing to be on one because you're trying to find someone to date, theoretically, you're meant looking for someone else who is also looking for someone to date. But really, if you're someone who's, looking to very seriously get married and you get matched with someone who isn't really sure what they want, but they want companionship. Like your goals are actually very different, but you're being presented with the idea that you maybe want the same thing. I think you need more ways to screen because it just, I think leads to a lot of heartache. It's been, it's pretty, they're pretty, it's pretty painful. It's also feels like, 
I'm judging these women by the way they look, one Good. after the yeah. other after the other. And it's you, like, you, but oh no, no. God. Instead of just swiping, you should message them and tell them they're ugly. Be like, I didn't swipe <laughs> like, left on you. Well, I'm bubbling right you. I can't. Can you, can you message people you don't swipe on or no? Or can you? No. I, I don't even I don't know. You need to swipe like. on each other in order to be able to message each other. You and then oh, Bumble okay. is the one with the girls message first, Correct. right? So then I guess what you do is what? So I remember uh, reading how guys would just swipe right on every single one, no matter what. Yeah. I would I'm, actually judge them one by one. I can't bring myself to do the <laughs> bulk. What? Bumble, Bumble, Bumble came around. Bumble requires women to message first. And the problem was because on every other dating app, women have 76,000 messages and men have zero. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, Eventually, guys just started saying, I'm done with this. It's too much work. I don't want to do it. Well, and OkCupid has, from what I know, they actually do some of the best um, data analysis of of the information they have. And I remember uh, listening to one of their analysts talk about how um, women can be less attractive. Like instead of it being like, you know, people about the same attractive level pair up, uh, the app favor basically uglier women. Like men will compromise on the app in a way that they wouldn't in person, wow. which is fascinating. Well, it's because the competition is so high. Mm-hmm. So it changes market dynamics. If, you, if you're a guy and you go to a bar and there's a handful of single women, you're going to have like an average or attractive or whatever woman. And you can walk up. There's a few guys to, to uh, compete with. On the internet, you have literally every single guy everywhere you're competing with. And like you're competing with a fantasy like when you see the dating like the way she moves is such an indicator of if you want to be with her in my opinion seeing a, a still photo or even a video because it's just a two-dimensional mm-hmm. amplification of like you know of, mm-hmm. a, of a mirroring of what she's doing well now and one smell, big issue is you know, that on that. tinder trans people just list themselves as that's another reason why I, i'm really disconcerted with these things because yeah, like the apps don't work a trans person it's like you're, it says are you, i'm looking for women i want women i don't want a, a well, man trans that transitioned into a woman. I want a woman. Woman and in so, the traditional sense. Yes. What's <laughs> happened is socially that trans women who are male will just list themselves as woman and then go on the app and then that's it. I reported Dudes one. Dudes will be swiping and it'll be like, I don't want a dude. I reported one of those people. It was a, it was a guy, trans woman, man. And I was like, I can't, I can't let this fly on this app. The righteous thing to do is to report that guy for presenting himself as a as a female to men when he was it used a guy. to be called catfishing. Mm-hmm. Now you're a bigot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think I did the right thing. Uh, usually, I'll just ignore those people if they, they pop up, and it's not that frequent. I think those companies have a, a duty to not, you know, not to go there. Well, you it can could be like if uh, you want trans people, that should be a thing that you put on there and indicate. And it's really dangerous. I mean, if someone agrees to meet with. Uh, an individual not knowing that they're trans, that can be dangerous for the trans person. Mm-hmm. But there was like a viral post, that went, there was a post that went viral from like Reddit where a trans person said that they lie intentionally and don't, they, they, they advocated to not tell the person if you're passing, don't say anything until way later on. The best way that's to start crazy. a relationship on deception. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I, I just think that's crazy. I did like, there was this one post of this girl like showing her Tinder screen. She was like, oh, there's this guy. And then she moves to her filming her laptop where he's like wanted for stalking. Wow. So like, Yikes. that's why I just think it's maybe better to meet people in person. You know Well, I mean, saying? if you meet in person, you don't know anything about them at all. But if you like meet people through friends or like somewhere you have something in common with them, like I just think that there is, there is a way to, to better na- narrow down who you should be dating with. And you're more likely to have things in common with people that are, in similar communities as you do that share your mm-hmm. values on the internet you could really be anyone friends of, i think friends yeah. of friends is the best yeah that's from my experience there's a people well, I, can vouch for them and yeah. like yeah. people know them that's why twitter is so funny because you get these people who go on twitter and they're like i'm being harassed by the far right and it's like a 12 year old <laughs> it's like a 12 year old just saying like you're dumb you're so stupid no but on the internet people don't know you're 14 and so what happens is people go on Twitter and they get into these arguments, like a 40 year old guy arguing with someone on Twitter, not realizing it's some 13 year old who literally has no idea what, you're, what he's talking about and doesn't care. I got to remind myself that when I'm gaming too, uh, <laughs> if, if like some guy on my team is failing and I'm like, I want to be like, you idiot, you piece of, shit. but I'd like, no, he's probably like a nine year old <laughs> learning and, and so sometimes hard. they actually are. They'll be like, thank you. My dad's letting me play. And, and like. <laughs> I could have crushed Thanks this kid's mind. Thanks for playing with me. My dad gave me back my Xbox because I got good grades. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh. So kind Lucia, words. Quit this. Go back to school. You're bad. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Well, Thinking think of those. Is, but that's the thing. Like when when you have that barrier between um, 
who you're talking about and who who you really are it changes the way you you act i mean that's why all bot accounts that tell you that you're annoying or that you're not good at stuff or whatever on the internet are faceless because they're not actually accountable to anyone they're they're anonymous thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time